Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we have another wrestling figure review for you guys and it is on the brand new New Japan Pro Wrestling Ultimate Wrestling Action Figure Set. We got the full wave one right here. If you're wondering why this cardboard box is here, well I'm going to break it down for you really, really quickly. So this is actually the packaging for the figures, but once you get them out of their original boxes, they will come in these shipping containers. You guys will see here I left Ishii out of his packaging, or I left him in his packaging I should say because I wanted to show you guys how this comes. So it comes in a shipping container like this and you will pull back the tab here. You'll open this up and then when you pull it out, it will be in a plastic baggie. So here is the packaging and it will be inside this plastic bag. You'll take this box out of the plastic bag and then you will be left with this. And you guys can see it's got a spot varnished New Japan Pro Wrestling logo right there. The lion looks really good. It's got like a metallic sheen to it. It's got the name of the talent down here, Kazuchika Okada. And all of them are the exact same except the name changes. So Will Ospreay's up here. You got a Super 7 logo here. At the top, it also says Ultimates, which is pretty awesome. But for this, this is a little sleeve, and you will remove the sleeve from the packaging, and then, bam, you get your front viewing window of the talent. And on this, you get the New Japan Pro Wrestling logo. You get some ring ropes going around the front of the packaging. You get your front viewing window, of course. On the side, the ring ropes continue. On the back, I'm guessing this says a Kazuchika Okada in Japanese, but I don't know Japanese so I don't know what that says. Down here, it tells you a little bit about the talent, which is really nice. It tells you their finisher, their Twitter handle, where they're from, their height, their weight, an image of the talent, of course, and then on the other side is just the ring ropes, and then there you go. That's the full packaging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get Ishii out, and then uh, we can take a closer look at all of them and their packaging. If you guys would like to grab these figures, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. WrestlingFigures.com, guys. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. You can get the Ultimate Super 7 figures, not only just the New Japan ones, but you can get the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast guys, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. You can get the Good Brothers, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. And I know a lot of people are going to be looking forward to this review because they want to see if these figures are as bad as those Ringside Collectibles images, if they're if they're way better, if they're way worse, or if they're somewhere in between. So here is Osprey before we crack him out of his packaging. You guys can see Will Osprey there, and then there's what he looks like in the packaging. 360, here's the back of his box. Here's a shot of Tanahashi right there. It looks pretty damn good. I love all the IWGP championships that we're getting in this full set right there. You got Tanahashi right there. Here's the back of the packaging for Tanahashi if you guys wanted to check that out. And then here is Ishii out of his packaging with his t-shirt and all of his good stuff right there. So all of them look really good in packaging. I will say the packaging is very high quality. I like all the processes. This is basically, these are import figures. These aren't like your typical retail figures, man. I mean, these come with some high quality. Hopefully Hopefully that will be the case here as we get them out of the packaging. See what they all look like and everything like that. I will say, if you're wondering how they look compared to those Ringside Collectibles images, when I'm looking at them right here, they definitely look a lot better in person than they did in those images. But we won't know fully, guys, until we crack them out of the packaging. So with that being said, guys, let's crack all these guys out of the packaging and shut the hell up and find out for ourselves. Alright guys, so here is all the Ultimate New Japan Pro Wrestling figures out of their packaging. I did a little bit of research on them. I didn't take all of their entrance gear off and fully pose them around. I did pose them around a little bit, but I didn't want to take all of the entrance gear off because I wanted you guys to see what they look like out of the packaging in their entrance gear. So here is all of that. You have Tanahashi, Okada, Osprey, all in their entrance gear. I went ahead and took Ishii's t-shirt off just to see how that would go because you will notice later on that it doesn't have Velcro. It's like just a straight up t-shirt, which I I'll explain all of those things and get through all of it. Now, typically when we have four figures like this, we'll do just a quick rundown, but I feel like this wave is a little bit special and we need to take a little bit more time with them. So I'm not going to just speed run through all of them. I am going to take my time with them a little bit and showcase all the different features of the figures, everything you get, because these are $45 at retail or a little bit over $45 or so. And I want you guys to get the full aspect of what you're getting when you order these because the price point has to be considered because the, you know, these aren't WWE at least these aren't AEW and Rival where it's like 20 bucks at Walmart. This is like two and a half figures in one as far as price is concerned. So I guess what I can do is I will start off with like I guess what I'll do is just run through Osprey's accessories and Osprey and just continue down the line until we get through all of them and we'll showcase all of the different aspects of these figures. Do some comparisons if we can and just showcase everything there is about these New Japan wrestling figures. See if they're worth the money guys and you guys can make a judgment for yourselves and I'll also give my own opinions on the full wave and let you guys know what I think about them. But let's go 
go ahead and get started and start things off with Will Ospreay since he was the most famous one in those ringside collectibles photos. So getting into Will Ospreay's accessories, guys, each one of these figures in this New Japan Ultimate set come with a slew of accessories, and that is something that you will notice as we go through here, guys. But you guys can see he comes with two interchangeable head sculpts. We get some trophy accessories. We get a weapon accessory. We get an entrance vest slash coat, and we get a bunch of pairs of hands. Six pairs of interchangeable hands to be exact, so 12 total hands right here. But let's go ahead and dive into the head sculpts first, starting out with his straight face. And I think it has some light likeness to Osprey. Again, when you compare them to the prototype images or the images we got before, you know, like during the pre-order phase, you know, when they said these are up for pre-order, here's what they're going to look like, and they showcased them. This is not what it looked like. It looked like it was hand-painted. It looked like it had a matte, flat tone. This definitely has like a sheen to it. You guys can see the sculpt is nice, though. I will say, like going around, the haircut is nice. The beard looks good. Eyes look good and everything. I mean, again, it's just that skin tone, really. That skin tone is just not what we thought it was going to be. I don't I don't think it's a bad head sculpt whatsoever. I think if you wanted to cast it and then hand paint it yourself maybe, or maybe you wanted to paint over this one, I think you could do that, but there is the straight face. You also have the pissed off or the talking to Seth Rollins on Twitter head sculpt, and I think that the straight face is a little bit better. I think, I don't know, they're pretty even. I think this definitely has some likeness to Osprey, but the hair is a little bit different. You guys can see that it's like parted to the left on the pissed off head sculpt, and then it's parted to the right on the other head sculpt, but you guys can see he's pissed off. It's pretty much the same thing, except he's pissed off right there. I don't think they're bad or anything, but they definitely don't look like how the prototype images looked or anything like that. But there is your two interchangeable head sculpts. They're just like Mattel as far as popping them on and off. You have like a ball joint right here, and you'll just pop this on. You just plop it on here. Okay, so that is something that I'm not really big fan of. It seems like it seems like there's a little bit of like a bobblehead deal going on right here where like maybe the head doesn't go on as much as it needs to or something or it just rests in there. So you got a little bobblehead effect going on right there. I think the straight head sculpt fits it a lot better. The straight one definitely fits it a lot better, and I think it goes a little bit lower right there, but they both kind of are, you know, they're kind of loosey-goosey if you touch them. Like, anyways, moving on from the head sculpts, guys, we do have a Best of the Super Juniors trophy, which has a really nice sheen and a nice sculpt to it. It looks like the trophy, as far as I'm concerned, it has some nice, uh, you know, it, it's got a lot of something special going on there, young man. Really cool to add to the trophy case for our action figure, so that's really cool right there. Maybe somebody could use that for a fed. We also also have a look at the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, and this looks really good. I think all the title belts look really good. They're not like super duper flimsy, kind of like the uh, the first uh, little bit of the bubbly Jericho belt. They have a little bit better uh, material to them, I think. I don't think they're as good a quality as Mattel as far as the strap is concerned, but it definitely looks really good. Like the silver and the gold plates and stuff like that look really strong. I don't think you'll have a problem with this title belt. I like it a lot. I think it looks really, really clean. Outside of that, we also get a Katana accessory, which which looks really nice. It's got some nice stitching going on on the handle right there. Nice silver blade coming up. It does have a little bit of sharpness to it. Not too much though. I think it's about what you would expect out of a figure katana or something like that. But it looks really good. No warpage or anything. Feels really good. Like it a lot. And then for his last accessory outside of hands guys. We have his entrance vest which is fully cloth. And it does velcro in the middle right here. So you know you put it on the figure. And then you would wrap it around. And then you velcro it in the front. And then he has his entrance vest. Very high quality right here. It also has a hood on it. It seemed to fit the figure pretty good. I don't have any problems with that. You guys know that we love our, you know, cloth accessories from Mattel and other companies, so I think you will get a kick out of these accessories as well. But there's his entrance vest. It's got a nice, like, polyester, like, sheen to it, and it looks pretty damn good. Now, as far as interchangeable hands, guys, he comes with fists. He comes with pointer hands. He comes with, like, these grappling-style hands. He comes with katana-wielding hands, and which is weird because these have hand tape on them, but none of, them, none of the rest do. And not only that, but it's not painted. So I don't know if that's a QC issue or what the deal is on these. But you guys can see the katana wielding hands with the hand tape. Don't have the hand tape painted. And all the figures come like that. Every single figure, they're like mic holding slash, you know, weapon holding hands like this. Have the tape sculpted on there, but they're not painted. He also has some more like grappling style hands. A little bit more of a grapple instead of like wide open hands. And then he has karate chop action hands like Buzz Lightyear. So it's like praying slash... Uh, karate chop hands slash I guess they could be relaxed hands if you wanted them to be but they kind of look more like chopping or slapping hands but outside of that guys that does it for Will Ospreay's accessories
Now getting into Will Ospreay himself, guys, I'm not going to spend too much on the head sculpt because we did take a closer look at all of the head sculpts. We're going to take a closer look at the head sculpts during the accessories portion, but you guys can see how it fits the neck. It definitely seems like his neck is too tall. Most definitely, I'm not sure if you could fix it by drilling into the head sculpt more, but it seems to me that his head does sit a little bit too tall as far as my liking is concerned. Uh, as far as the skin tone is concerned as well, you guys can kind of see right here. You guys can see where the flat skin tone, or in the joints, you can also see what the base was and then they came over with like this pinkish red tone like really lightly and made it where it shades and makes uh, all the musculars kind of stand out kind of like the old WCW figures but yes the torso looks pretty good as far as the abs are concerned I'm pretty sure you know Will Ospreay's pretty jack guy he looks pretty good right here I don't have a problem with that arms look pretty good they are single jointed however which could be a problem for a lot of people our elites right now are single jointed so if you guys want to compare some with that also right here you'll notice that on the wrist tape you guys can see that little spray over kind of got on there so you guys can see that it's not completely white wrist tape because the paint splatter from the airbrush or whatever they use to paint over the torsos and stuff got over the white wrist tape so that's a little mistake right there and I feel like you know when you're paying $45 for something that's kind of one of those things that you really don't want to see with these kinds of figures right here but going down into the tights now the crotch is actually like a soft rubber piece so it's kind of like the storm collectibles a lot these figures pretty much remind me of the storm collectibles figures except they don't have double jointed knees and arms that's pretty much what i am figuring out about them right now but the tights look good i'm not a big will osprey guy i've never been a big will, will osprey guy i can respect the guy's talents and i can respect his athleticism but as far as in ring and stuff like that i just I, I don't know like i feel like his stuff's too choreographed need to give him another chance to be honest with you but the black gold and red look pretty good you have his knee pads going around open in the back i think all of them have the same knee pads like the same style and stuff he also has his kick pads going down you got the red and the gold and the black and and signature Will Ospreay wrestling shoes or boots, teal outsoles right there. So that's something to, to note right there. And as far as articulation, I do want to get into the articulation real quick. So he is on a ball joint here, so he really can't look up and down because of that. He can, you know, rotate all the way, but you don't get a lot of playability out of this because it is on a ball joint. Ab crunch, he can crunch forward that far. He can crunch back that far. He does have waist swivel. He has ratchet joints at the shoulder, so he can go above 90 degrees like the AEW figures. You get the full 360 right Right there single jointed elbows but he can still like i think he could still hold a mic to his mouth if he wanted to like if you you know if you gave him a microphone i would obviously we'd like to see double jointed if possible you get a bo bicep rotation right there on the other side of this arm you guys can kind of see where the shading gets a little bit lackadaisical and that more of that base skin tone comes a little bit through right there but there's your arm articulation as far as the legs he can kick forward that much he can kick back a little bit because uh this is made of like a soft rubber so he can't actually kick back a a little bit. He has single jointed knees, which is kind of crappy. And as far as thigh cut and like, you know, like rotating the leg, he doesn't have a thigh cut, but you can still rotate this because I think this little ball joint mechanism has a thigh like rotation built into it. So it can still rotate. It just isn't a typical thigh cut. And the same thing goes for the boot rotation. It's not your typical boot rotation. It actually has rotation built into the joint. So you can still rotate the lower knee and single joint it. You just don't get isolated boot rotation right here with the boot and then as far as ankles they do go down and up and he has ankle pivot that are a little bit loose but at the end of the day that's pretty much what all these figures have as far as articulation it's not terrible by any means i think an elite has better articulation however i think that uh, you know it's not terrible it's not as bad as i thought it was going to be but they also are kind of just a little bit stiff but i don't know if you guys i feel i don't know it's kind of hard to say man if you guys are really big new japan guys you'll probably really enjoy this figure but if you're wanting to like fed with it i think you could fed with it but like if you guys want let's see if i can do like a running pose here's my like 30 second running pose so there you go but that pretty much does it for will osprey and then for scaling purposes guys here's will osprey up next to seth rollins and kenny omega and you guys will see the will osprey definitely stands taller than both of these guys and the kenny omega is a little bit taller than the seth rollins as well but i don't know you might could be able to get away with it you know it's not the biggest deal in the world also if you drilled into that head you may be able to, you know, let it lower a little bit more. So I don't know. Will Ospreay is about 6'1", which I think Seth Rollins is supposed to be 6'1", 6'2", and Kenny Omega is six foot. So I don't know. These may scale pretty well. I think uh, he could come down a little bit, I think, overall. And just the overall girth of his body is a little bit bigger than everybody else, but you may be able to get, get away with it if you wanted to. So getting into Tanahashi's accessories, guys, starting out with his championship, he does come with the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. And just like the junior heavyweight, I think 
think they did a really good job on this. I think it captures the likeness of the championship beautifully. White stripe looks really good. It almost has like a pearlescent going on with it. I think the colors of it look really good. All the prints and stuff. This is high quality. I think this is higher quality than the others, actually. It may be the same, but I don't know. Maybe I just like the look of this title better. I'm not entirely sure, but the IWGP Intercontinental Championship looks really nice. I like the way that goes. We also have two interchangeable head sculpts with Tanahashi. You have the straight face and the smiling face, and you guys can let me know which you like down below. At first, I liked the smiling head sculpt a little bit better, but now I feel like I like the straight face or the serious face a little bit better. I don't know. The blonde hair or the blonde streaks, I should say, looks really, really good. Hair sculpt looks good. I like it a lot. I think all the good things are going on with the Tanahashi figure. I think the likeness is there. Before we even got the figures in hand, I thought Tanahashi was the best figure overall. I'll see if that still stands at the end of the video, but there is Tanahashi's two interchangeable head sculpts. He also comes with his entrance coat. Now, this right here, this is high quality football right here, man. Like, look at this entrance coat. It's like cloth, but it's also like high, high quality, man. You have his print on there. You have the little felt like piece right there. You have these little straps going on. It goes on really easily, comes off really easily. I think you could use this with a Mattel figure if you want to, or an AEW figure maybe, if you wanted to pose that around with that. I don't know. It just looks really damn good, man. Very high quality-ish going on with this piece. Like, high quality stitch. I mean, this is, I feel like a lot of the money that we're getting with these figures is going straight into the entrance gear, because this entrance gear is very nice and stout. No doubt about it, the prints and everything look fantastic and great on these entrance gears. Outside of that, guys, he comes with the exact same pairs of hands that Will Ospreay comes with. So, you know, your fists, your wide open grappling hands, your weapon holding hands, your pointing hands. He comes with the exact same hands as Will Ospreay, and they actually all come with the same hands. And he also comes with an electric V-neck guitar, which is really cool as well. All these sculpts and stuff on this guitar are really nice. The knobs and the strings and the matte black. The strings aren't operational or anything, and I would be careful with this because I can feel where this could snap in half if you pushed it too far. So definitely be careful with that. You got your knobs up here that look really good as well. You know, you can't tune them or anything, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, the electric guitar looks really nice overall. Very nice paint apps and stuff like that. But Tanahashi's accessories are quality, man. No doubt about it. I think all of them turned out pretty good. But that does it for Tanahashi's accessories. So on to Tanahashi, guys, we've already taken a look at the head sculpt again, but going down into the arms, he does have his arm sleeves right there. He has one arm sleeve, I'm sorry. He has his one arm sleeve going down right here. It says Ace on it. It's got white stripes and designs going on on there, so that looks pretty good right there. Single jointed elbows, as we already know. Uh, his skin tone looks a lot better to me than Will Ospreay's does, and his skin tone may look the most natural out of all of them. Maybe, I don't know, Ishii's also looks pretty good as well. I feel like Okada's and Ospreay's just has a lot more and just uh, maybe a a little bit too much going on with it. He's got a white bracelet over here on this side. He's got his signature Tanahashi tights with his like brackets or chevron style logos going down. It's got Ace down the side here. You got High Fly over here with his stars. Go Dynamite in red underneath High Fly. Hiroshi Tanahashi. You got the Ace logo right there again. Ace down the sides here. Again, his same chevron like patterns going down in black, silver, and white. His white boots look really clean as well. I like like they have like a finish on them that are like shiny, like real wrestling boots. He also has the black stripes in there with the black laces, which look really nice and everything like that. Overall, the Tanahashi, I don't know, man. Again, like, he really feels like he may be the best figure overall. His joints feel really good. Just everything about the Tanahashi just kind of feels right in the hand if that makes any sense. If you guys want to see what Tanahashi looks like up next to the Rollins and the Kenny Omega as well, we can do that right quick. You guys can see he stands shorter than both of these guys, or around the same as Rollins, and then shorter than Omega over there. I feel like Tanahashi's scales better, honestly. But then again, Tanahashi is 5'10", so that may be why. Maybe that's why he scales a little bit more, a little bit better than the rest of them. So getting into Okada's accessories, guys, let's start off with this banging freaking entrance coat or entrance vest or whatever you want to call this thing, man. This is high quality. It feels really good in the hand. Like, I bet this would go nicely on Mattel figures as well, but you guys can see it is cloth. It fits really nice. You got all the nice graphics going on there. The K-O-R-N Kazutsuka Okada Rainmaker all going down. All the designs. You got RR Rainmaker down here. Nice designs going all the way around. You got these flaps right here, which flap and 
drape over that have a nice weight to them. I mean, dude, this is just high quality. You got the K over here. You got the RM over there. Just really nice craftsmanship done on these entrance coats, man. I don't know. Like, they did an outstanding job on these entrance coats. All these different entrance accessories, like, they're all cloth. Like, there's no rubber or anything like that. So, very, very outstanding job to the Super 7 team. Like, hats off to you for these quality entrance accessories, man. They're really, really nice. It's so damn nice. Love to see it. I wish every figure came with that. As far as the rest of his accessories, guys, you gotta talk about the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, and this just looks quality as well. I mean, again, all these title belts look really outstanding as well, man. Every title that comes, I think every ch every figure does come with a championship, and I think that has to come in the price point, because they're really high quality, again, like I said. Again, the straps could be a little bit better, but as far as, like, paint apps and sculpt and everything that goes on with the face of the plates and, you know, everything like that, I mean, they did a really good job on it, man. I really like the way this came out. I'm very happy to have an official IWGP Heavyweight Championship in the collection now. Now, as far as the Okada is concerned, this is my biggest concern with the figures, man. And it's got to be the head sculpts. Like, it may have some likeness to Okada, man, but overall, these just don't look that much like Kazuchika Okada. I would say that the one on the right looks a little bit like him, but this one just doesn't look like him to me. I think this one looks a little bit more like him, but also, I think it's because what they did with these figures, guys, is another thing you'll notice, is they did the skin tone in one solid color, and then what they did is they took like an airbrush and they came back and they did the details like the shading and stuff to give it more you know detail in the sculpt and make it look more you know detailed and with this it's almost like they gave Kazushko Kata a five o'clock shadow and it just comes off weird how like the bottom of his head has like this dark shadow over it and I don't know I just feel like the skin tone's off all the way anyways and I don't think the sculpt's bad as far as the hair is concerned and stuff but I feel like if you repainted this or something like that it would look a lot better but I don't know it definitely doesn't look as bad as it did in those images, but I, uh, yeah, I definitely think these head sculpts could be better for Okada and a lot of the other talent. Now, also with Okada, you also get his entrance necklace, so you got this nice necklace going on. It is one sculpt and everything, so it is rubber, and, you know, you just, you, you can put it over the neck. You guys already kind of saw what that looked like on the figure. He also comes with some money, so you got two different sculpts. You have, like, some money spread out, and then you have, like, a stack of money right there, which is pretty good. No real detail going on. Like, you get a little bit of sculpted detail in there, but no paint apps or anything on these, so that's a pretty cool accessory. And then as far as his hand, like, I don't know if you guys can see, like, look at his hands. Like, look how dark this hand is. See how dark this hand is compared to, like, the other? Like, look at this hand. Like, look at that, dude. That's completely different. Is that the same? Okay, so I got two of the same hand. One's painted, one's not. Did I get? I might have got Tanahashi's mixed in there, maybe. Okay, maybe I got Tanahashi's mixed in there or something, but there is that. You guys can still see the darkness, though, of the hands, and then, like, I don't know, you can really tell the shape that is done on the Okadas because of the different shades and stuff like that. Also, look right here in the joint. You guys see right there where the paint continues and then when you, you see what I'm saying? There's paint there, but then when you bend it, you guys can see the skin tone underneath there. So there you go. So as far as Okada is concerned, guys, this head sculpt to me looks the best out of the two. I just feel like, I, I don't really know. Also, his hair right here on the, the little bang right here on the side, the little curl is very sharp. So be careful when handling that. Like, no doubt, that could cut you. I'm not even gonna lie to you. That's crazy. Crazy, that little rubber piece right there. Going down, again, I just feel like the, the skin tone isn't the most accurate. Again, it's not the biggest deal, but he's got black wrist tape over here, more of a maroon tape over there. Black elbow pad is painted on compared to Ishii, who has a, a removable elbow pad. Waist swivel in there. You guys can see the torso design and everything like that. I don't have any issues with any of that. The attire looks pretty good. You got the black biker shorts with the red and gold and silver designs. All of Okada's attires look really clean. I don't know what it is about them. They, they like have like a a really nice like royalty style factor going on with them if you will going down into the kick pads and the knee pads he doesn't have kick pads he has boots but you got the KORM for Kazushko Kata Rainmaker you got the Rainmaker logo there or the Rainmaker you know text with the design on it same uh, uh, knee pads as we saw before and he does have regular style boots and again you don't get boot rotation but you get knee rotation and he is on the single jointed like the others and I would say all of their articulation is the same like I'm not getting a lot of variation between the articulations of all the different guys. Overall, man, I mean, again, I, God, I want this figure to be much better than it is. And if you guys wanted to see what Okada looks like up next to Omega and Seth Rollins, if you guys wanted to check that out, you know, you want to, you know, your best bouts and your best, yeah, everything like that. Okada and Kenny scale pretty good. I like the way that looks. And then here is Rollins coming in, who also scales decent as well. Maybe they just make Rollins too small. Maybe that's the case. The legs that Mattel uses are just a little bit too small, 
But there is Okada next up to Seth Rollins and Kenny Omega. So getting into Ishii's accessories, guys, let's get into his championship. Now, this is the Never Open Weight Championship, and I love the design of this championship. I think it looks really good. And actually, the current champion right now is Tanahashi. The Open Weight Championship looks pretty good. I like everything. I don't know, for some reason, the center plate kind of reminds me of like a fire department logo or something like that. I don't know, but the side plates look good. The texture on the strap looks good. This strap, for some reason, feels a little bit more flimsy than the rest. I'm not sure if it's just the material that it's made out of, or that's, that's obviously that that's the case, but who knows exactly why that is, but this championship looks really, really nicely. Ishii's interchangeable head sculpt, you guys can see here, you got more of like a pissed off, like, this is typical Ishii right here, I mean that, I feel like that looks just like him, honestly, I feel like it looks pretty damn good. So you guys can see the difference in Ishii's accessory, I mean accessories, you guys can see the difference in Ishii's head sculpts, I think they did a really good job on both of them. Now for his other accessories, guys, he also comes with a cloth t-shirt, so it's a black shirt that says Chaos, you got the pit bull on there and then it says stone pit bull and it is fully solid man there's no velcro on this thing so you just got to put it on like a regular t-shirt one arm one arm you know over the top right there through the head hole and you put the black t-shirt onto Ishii he also comes with a steel chair which is really nice to see so we get a weapon accessory to go along with our katana and I guess the guitar could serve as a weapon and the title belts but as far as designed weapon here is a steel chair it's got a nice gray color to it it's like kind of a matte color you got the little black end caps right here on the steel chair so it doesn't fuck up the carpet or the floor and then you also have the folding uh, mechanism which it's a little bit loose it's not too bad though and it uh it works nicely you know it sits there pretty good so i cover his interchangeable hands guys but they're the exact same as the rest of the figures all the figures again have the exact same hand accessories so with that being said guys that is all of ishii's accessories and covering the last figure in the set, guys, is going to be Ishii. And again, I like this head sculpt for Ishii. I also like this torso, man. He's big. He's grand. He's got a lot of guts. You got a little something special going on there, young man. Nice waist swivel going on right there. You guys can see the, the nips right there on the front of the torso. He's got a removable elbow pad on his right side. You do have like this, his belt wrap or his waist wrap right here, which looks really good. You got the pit bull and like this great designs going on around the side of his black tights. You got the pit bull logo on the back of the belt right there. And I don't know. I really like the Ishii figure from the waist up, but from the waist down, I'm not really feeling it. I think mainly it's the short shoes that they give him. Again, he doesn't have knee pads or anything, but his, his thigh cut is the same. You know, he gets the leg rotation, single jointed knee here, and here is a better way where you guys can see that knee rotation. So you guys can see the knee does rotate. So there's a peg that goes up inside of that bend. That way he can rotate right there, but you guys can see the short boots right here. Again, it doesn't have its own thing. You gotta rotate the whole knee to get that to go, but his ankles are kind of loosey goosey see a little bit like when he stands up he is difficult to stand at some points but I, I think I've kind of figured it out now so it's not as bad so that may get so it takes some getting used to when you're doing that but there is Ishii and if we want to see what he looks like I know he's had some bouts with Omega in the past so if you guys want to see Omega up next to Ishii that looks pretty good right there and then uh, here's Rollins up next to you get your legs straight ball so there's that right there but actually I think like I think Ishii's supposed to be five six or something like that which is actually kind of crazy so i don't know maybe he doesn't scale that well with these guys he should be a little bit shorter man i don't know ah, nah he should be a little bit shorter i think but overall i actually like the ishii except for the ankles all right guys well i think that is pretty much going to wrap up this four in one full new japan ultimate super seven review on the full new japan pro wrestling wave guys overall thoughts on them are they worth the 45 dollars a piece huh i don't think so i don't think so. The, the entrance coats are fantastic. The belts are fantastic, but the, like, if you're wanting to use these to, like, pose around and, you know, do pick feds with and, like, get a super amount of articulation out of, I wouldn't recommend these. However, if you're just gonna have them on display, I think they are really awesome display pieces. Like, if you're looking for a lot of articulation, I'd say nah, but if you just want to display them with the rest of your wrestling figure collection or you want to do, like, a new Japan shelf, I think you could get away with that. I think it would look pretty good. Now, some of the likenesses are a little bit off. You know, there's a bit of one wonky stuff going on as far as QC issues and stuff, but overall, the accessories are great. But I don't know. that I'll leave that up to you. You guys can check it out. You know, you guys know what you want it for or what you would like to do with these, so you guys can let me know. I think honestly, they look pretty good mock, so maybe you want to keep them mock. I don't know. But is that worth it? Is, is $50 a piece worth it to keep them mock on the shelf? I don't know. I know a lot of people do stuff like that, but I don't know. That's all on you. I just give my opinion on it, and you guys can let me know what you think of everything down in the comment section below, guys. If you would like to order this set, again, go over to 
WrestlingFigures.com, Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. You get plenty of options over there. You can get the, you know, you can pre-order Series 2, I think. But before we get out of here, guys, let's go ahead and get into our random shout-out. Again, I will say that I think that overall, the figures are a lot better in person than how they looked in those images. But they don't look as good as the pre-order images that we got, you know, with the, you know, the likeness to the figures and the likeness to the actual people that these figures are representing looked a lot better in the pre-order images and the prototype images. So this shout-out is going to go to Just Dance Fan 1000 who says, everybody hates that explosion. So you know what that means. It crossed the line. Absolutely, Brad. I don't want to spend too much more time on that explosion at the AEW event. I'm really excited for Dynamite because I want to see exactly what they have to say about that. But uh, yeah, huge shout-out to Just Dance Fan 1000 for that, guys. I'm getting the hell out of here. This review took me hours. So if you guys would, please leave me a like and subscribe and leave me a comment for the for the long review. If you guys stayed the whole way, you guys are beasts. But thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel and uh, don't cross the line. You cross the line.